Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're taking a look at Magica CSG, a tool made available by the folks at FTRACY and this is a lightweight signed distance field editor. Now most of you guys probably have no idea what this is and you might have been able to see the selfie girl which was entirely made out of mats and this is one of the things that you can do with procedural signed distance field. Now for anyone who would like to read more about this you can simply go over to a blog here that will get you up to speed with what signed distance field looks like and at the same time you can read up on all the mathematical stuff that has to do with this and get good with it. Now the beautiful thing about this tool is that currently it is available and you can download it for free and again instead of you know going all the way to page like shader toy and typing all those things and trying to create yours you can now create your own sdf model within a ui so this is also something that makes a lot of sense so with this set let's dive directly into magica csg and take a look at how this actually works so with this open right here you can see that the ui looks extremely simple this is where the scene construction happens down here is where the objects that you'll be creating that would exist in a given layer that exists in a scene will be made. The stroke section actually deals with the geometries which you'll be creating right here and you can also see a couple of parameters for this. And of course for those who like to render their final work there is a renderer right here which is a path tracing renderer and it makes use of the Intel Open Image Denoiser and we're going to talk about the new update that is currently available for that. Now back here you would also notice that we have a huge workspace which is our viewport where we can create stuff. You can also notice that around here is where we get to see our parameters. Down here is where you can change the cameras. So in case you want to see this in perspective, you want to see it in orthographic, ISO, or maybe you want to play with a couple of things like recentering the camera and also showing the camera ruler, or maybe you want to simply hide the view cube or show the view cube, you can actually use this. So the view cube also comes in very handy in terms of navigating across this. So switching back to perspective, which I kind of like working with, we can start making stuff. So how do you navigate across this? Navigating across this is pretty simple. You use your middle mouse button to pan, use your right mouse button to a beat, and then with your middle mouse button, you can roll in and roll out. So you can press down on the middle mouse button to pan, roll in, roll out, and then you can, you know, just use the right mouse button to control this. And to make more geometries, which is actually called stroke here, you need to hold down shift on the keyboard, click and drag, and that way you can make one of these. Now that we've made this, you can notice that we've just made one cube here and another cube, and we can choose to play with the hole. So in case we want to give it a hole, you can see that. If we want to add some bevels, we can do that. If we want to round these things off, we can also do it. And if we want to switch this to a cone, it is interesting how this works. You can actually switch this to a cone and then you can play with all of these things to get something more suitable for what you're trying to create. So we can move this to a point, raise this all the way up and we can position that right around there. So let's also scale this to match. Let's hold down shift and make another copy and you can see it. Now, if you would like to blend this with what you had before, you can simply select that and click on the blend button and you can see and click and drag within the blend and you can blend this. Now the blending doesn't only work for the geometry, you can also blend the color. So if I go in here and change the color to something like this and I start doing that blending, I want you guys to see how this actually blends in. So this is pretty neat and uh, it has a couple of you know cool things that you can do with it. So there's a couple of examples which we're also going to take a look at but before we do that, let's also take a look at how the layer system works. So this has a layer system and of course how it works is pretty simple as well. So within the layer system, if we click on the plus sign, we can create a brand new layer and within that brand new layer, all you're working on needs to exist here. If you click on this object and actually move it back to this point, you would notice that it switches back to the previous layer. So let's actually right click and name this 01 as uh, the first layer. And we can also right click and name this 02 as the second layer. So within the second layer, if we'd like to create multiple stuff, let's say we want to create another geometry in terms of let's say a joint, a polygon, maybe a sphere. I think a sphere would be cool. We can do that by simply clicking on the plus sign to add a brand new cube. And then we can now click on sphere to convert what we have here to become in a sphere. And we can also make another copy like this, hold on shift and make a copy. And if you like to make things like meatballs, you can do the blending and you'd notice that we have a meatball within our scene. And at this point, you might be asking, what other thing can we do? Are we only working with the Boolean function that deals with union? No, there's a couple of more things you can do. So if we also make another copy 
and I simply go in and use the scaling tool to scale this down, maybe scale this one down and turn off the blending. Let's also scale this a little bit downwards as well. We can choose to move this in and instead of having it as a union object, we can simply separate it. So once we separate that, you can see what we can create with this and we can make another copy, hold down, shift and click and drag to this point and you can start seeing some cool stuff. So we can go over here where we have the open project button and open one of the templates that is available or we can choose to save our project. Now if you would like to save us, you can click on this button to do that and you can add a new one or maybe make a duplicate of the project you're working on. Now there's also something very tiny that I think you guys need to see and that is right here. So if we go over here, we can hit on this button and we can open a project that is existing can take a look at them and we can simply select one click on no so we can see that or we can select this other one or select this other one and uh, you can see what we have so let's go in and open up this you know this one which is here and take a look at how this was made and of course you can see that we have different layers that are responsible for stuff right here and you can also see how cool this is so we can pick on any of this part let's also you know pick this part and tear the part position it right there click on the blend try to blend it even way more we can rotate this however we want and we can start creating some very interesting things so let's also make another copy so we can make another copy like this make a tiny blend let's change the color of this one Maybe we can give it a very tiny color like this, make it a bit more princess like. And uh, we can also do something like this and rotate it and position this one right here. And let me just move this all the way to this point, make another blend. And probably we would give it a much more, uh, maybe a color like this wouldn't look bad. So we can give it a color like that. I'm also going to rotate this a little bit so we can have something quite interesting you know, quite interesting to work with. So let's have this a bit bolder. I think it might be better if it's a bit bolder and we can bevel it a little bit more. Select this other one, bevel it a little bit more like that and even make it a bit more rounded so we can have something fun to look at. All right, so now that we have this, let's talk about the rendering. So once you have all these things ready, if you go over to the render section, and what we're looking at is during the render session, if you go over to the camera, you can choose to turn on or turn off the depth of field. So right now we've just turned off the depth of field and you can see that we can play with the perspective if that is what we want. If you would like to get some stereographic projection, you can turn that on and of course you can start noticing that if you like this to be in panorama, you can switch it to panorama as well. So I'm just going to go in and set this to perspective. You can play with the aperture size if you want. If you want to have a couple of blades in terms of your depth of field, you can also turn these things on and you can get some good results with it. Now from this part, you would also notice that we have the floor. So just in case you would like to have that ambience coming from the floor, you need to turn this on. And if you turn it on, you can now see that the shadows are casting. You can see that tiny ambience coming from the floor. And if you would like to get these in a different, you know, if you want to have it on a white background or something, you can turn this on and of course you'll be able to see that. You can change the sky from here so you can make changes to the sky. Let's also go in and take this out so you can make changes to the sky depending on what you want and you can even use a HDR you know depending on what you're trying to achieve. So if you're thinking about using a HDR to light your scene you can use a HDR to light your scene and you can see some cool things like this. If you want to play with intensity you can crank that up if you like to play with the area. You can also choose to crank this up and uh, get some pretty, pretty cool stuff with it. Now, every other thing here is self-explanatory in terms of exposure, vignettes. You can add some vignettes. You can take them out if you want to do that. If you'd also like to play with the bloom, you can also you know, add a couple of blooms if this is what you want. Your sizes are right here so you can make those decisions yourself by simply clicking and you can you know, change and play with the size however you want. And this is specifically for the final image size that you want to export. And once you're done, you can proceed. Come right here. Once the render is complete, click on this button and you'll be able to export this. And this is more like it. For those who like to take a look at this, I'm going to put a link in the description that will take you over to the page right here where you can see you know the magica csg and you can download it the two downsides that we have right now is first off this is only available for windows and again these 
cannot be exported at least right now we cannot export this to a 3d app you know a different 3d app altogether so at this point you can only work directly here and once you're done you can only export the final image as a png and of course you can notice that right now this is still in its very very early stage and probably there's going to be more updates coming to it link to this is going to be in the description link to where you can take a look at shader toy see how you can get started with it link to you know the blog where you can read more about the sign distance field is also going to be in the description for those who like to take a look at open image denoiser the magica csg is actually using right now to do all of the denoising you can come through and see it right here so intel open image denoiser version 1.4.0 has just been released and of course this is something that is also being implemented directly into magica csg so this is more like it and of course i would like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section and if you like the video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace